In this video, we're going to look at one of the most overlooked and underused aspects of creating and publishing KDP no content and low content books on Amazon. And that's the title and subtitle. So in this video, I'm going to tell you why it's so important, common mistakes publishers make and how I structure my titles and subtitles to take advantage of the Amazon search algorithm so that I can get my books seen by customers, hopefully clicked on and hopefully bought. Now, if you've not been to this channel before, then welcome. My name is Paul Miles and I do videos on how to make it, keep it and grow it. And that's your money I'm talking about. If you do like videos like that, then please do give it a thumbs up, hit the subscribe button and smash that notification bell. Okay, so why is the title and subtitle so important? Well, it's the prime position where you can use and place your keywords. Now, keywords are just the search terms that people put in the search bar on Amazon when they're looking to buy something. And the title and subtitle are the most valuable spots where you can use these because they have a lot of strength when it comes to ranking books on Amazon. The title and subtitle also tells Amazon what your book is about. And also, more importantly, it tells your customers what your book is about. Because often, customer will search on Amazon through all the listings of books, see a cover that they like, and then read the title. And if that title confirms it's something they're looking for, there's a good chance that they may then click on that particular book and hopefully, again, make a sale. Now, what the title and subtitle is not, it's not a sort of salesy headline piece designed to, you know, stand out and, and grab a customer's attention. That's the role of your book cover. As I've just said, the role of the title and subtitle is mainly to tell the customer what your book is about. So none of these fancy, salesy, hyperbole type words are needed. It just needs to be simple and structured well, which I'll tell you how to do that in a moment. So common mistakes I see people make with their books. Number one, that is not using keywords in the title at all. They're often used in the subtitle, but I see it all too often uh, not being used in the title. And so these publishers are really missing a big trick and missing a really strong way of getting their books ranked on Amazon. An example of this may be something like, I don't know, a gratitude journal. And the pattern on the front may be something like autumn leaves. And they'll name their book autumn leaves and use that in the title and then go on in the, the subtitle to, to give some description of the book and, and maybe mention the fact that it is a gratitude journal. And so they're missing out on that important place to put a keyword. And in fact, you know, if they're expecting people to go and look for autumn leaves, well, one, a customer's unlikely to be searching for that. And if they are, they're not really going to be looking for a gratitude journal or such like, well, probably not anyway. The other mistake I see publishers make is putting too many keywords in the subtitle of the book. And this is called keyword stuffing. And you'll often see six, seven, eight keywords all crammed together, maybe the odd um, comma here and there, but mostly they're all just crammed together and it doesn't make any sense. It's not readable. And when customers see it again, it looks amateurish, unprofessional puts them off and they just don't click on the book. The next is adding what I call extra fluff to the title. So for example, say you're publishing uh, an accounting ledger and that's going to be your main targeted keywords. So you'd like to use that in the title, but instead of just using that, they add other words. So may say something like small business accounting ledger, for keeping records of taxes. Now, that's all good and well, it's descriptive and it tells everyone what the book is about. However, it dilutes that main keyword that you are targeting. And I'll show you some examples in a moment which shows this much better. Okay, next thing that a lot of publishers make a mistake with is spelling mistakes, and this is a big one and it's very easily avoided using things like spell checker or software like Grammarly. Again, a spelling mistake looks very amateurish and puts customers off. The next is things like capitalization, and that's the incorrect capitalization of the words in the title and the subtitle. Again, it gives that overall 
a picture of being amateurish and unprofessional. If we have a look here on Amazon, I'll give you uh, an example. If we have a look at a couple of these titles and subtitles here, you'll notice that every word is capitalized except for the small words like for and and. Same for this book here, all capitalized except for the small word for. So as a general rule, what I suggest doing is capitalizing every word in your title and subtitle, except for those small words like and, for, the, and to. And that's T-O, not the number two. Okay, the next thing I see people do wrong, and that is the punctuation. And again, this is a big thing. And it's either too many commas or no commas at all. Or one of the big things I see is a publisher's putting a comma after a word, then not leaving a space between the comma and the next word. Again, it doesn't look good. So using software like Grammarly, if your first language isn't English or you're unsure about things like punctuation, it's worthwhile using a tool like that, which can help you not only get the spelling correct, but also those sort of grammatical errors that it's very easy to make. Now we come on to how I create and structure my titles and subtitles, which I think have helped my books get ranked and get seen on Amazon, which has contributed to the sales that I've made on the platform. So first of all, with the title, I only use one keyword in the title. Nothing else, no other fluff, no adjectives or anything like that, just a single keyword. And if you want to know how I go about doing my keyword research and how I choose my keywords to use in the title and subtitle. Well, I've done a video on that already, which I'll leave a link to up here. And I'll also leave a link to it down below in the description. Now, if we go back across to Accounting Ledger, and I'll show you an example of what I mean. And you'll see that there is this pattern with many books are ranked on the first page for many niches. So, in the search bar, I've put accounting ledger. So just let's have a look at the books that are listed on the first page. And obviously those that are listed on the first page are going to make most of the sales. So I've got this one here. Look at the title, accounting ledger. And we're just gonna be looking at the KDP books here. Again, this one here, title, accounting ledger, accounting ledger. This one's a sponsored ad, so we'll ignore those for the moment because they can appear here just on the fact, not because of the keywords, but just because of people have paid for their books to be there. Scroll down further again here, accounting ledger. So do you see that pattern? A lot of the books that are appearing on that first page for that particular keyword have that single keyword in the title. Don't believe me? Let's go over to say notary journal, uh, which I covered in my last video. Again, I've put notary journal here. Let's have a look at some of the books that are listed. So this KDP book, title, notary journal. This one here, notary journal, notary journal, notary journal. So again, you're seeing the same pattern. Notary journal here, notary journal there. All these key uh, KDP books are using that main search term in the title and that has contributed to those books appearing on the first page. So now we come on to the subtitle. And again, I keep this very simple and I split my subtitle into three sections. In the first section, I use a keyword related to my main keyword, and I'll use an adjective. So it may be something like cool or perfect or awesome. Now, if we're doing it for accounting ledger, I might use a related keyword like accounting book. So I'd put something like um, stylish accounting book. Then after that, in what I call the third section, so I'll write that bit, stylish accounting book, comma. Then in the middle, I'll write some information about the actual book itself. So it'll be something like 120 pages, perfect bound, comma. Then I'll go on to the last section. And there again, I'll use a keyword related to my main keyword, but I'll introduce some words related to the audience that I'm targeting. So if we take the accounting ledger again, I may use something like accountancy ledger. So again, it's a related keyword, not the exact same keyword that I used in the title. So that third part, I would say something like 
accountancy ledger, perfect for bookkeepers, accountants, and small businesses. So the advantage of this is that we may also pick up some search traffic for people that may search for something like a small business accounting ledger or a bookkeeper's accounting book. See what I mean? So we do all this. Now, does it guarantee that our book is going to appear on the first page for that particular search term? No, it doesn't. But what it does do is it gives our books a better chance of ranking for that particular keyword. You see, when it comes to ranking, there are many factors involved. You've got the book cover, you've got the pricing, whether the books had reviews, whether it's made any sales, whether you've sold any books yourself as an author and have got some author ranking, and whether customers actually click on your books. And this is a big one, the click-through rate. And this, a lot of the time, comes down to the book cover and in a small part, the number of reviews and the title. You see, you may have noticed or may not, when you do search, use a keyword, a search term and search on Amazon, you may sometimes notice that there are books listed pretty high up on that first page that don't have a bestsellers rank. It just says no rank found. And you go, well, why is that there? You know, it's not made any sales, but it's in the midst of all these books here that have made sales and are ranking well. Well, that's because Amazon is testing out these books. So especially after you've published a book, you may find within a few days or a week that that book has or is appearing on that first page. And they're testing that book to see if customers click on it. So you may have all the, the, the keywords all done correctly and the title, subtitle, and seven keyword boxes. But if there's a problem related to those I've just mentioned in terms of the mistakes in the title, or there's an issue of the book cover, and this is the main area of issue, so that customers don't actually click on it the book has a very low, what they call click-through rate. Not many customers are clicking on it. So if Amazon sees that, then they're not gonna keep a book ranked up highly on that first page. And it's not going to make any sales. So what happens is it just drops down in the rankings on Amazon. And usually, you know, you may find it after three, four, five or more pages down the rankings. So. There's lots of factors involved, but you need to get all these different factors right and all together and all working for your book. That's why it does take time with this business to learn all the different aspects of publishing and getting it all right so that you do make that breakthrough and do make those sales. But the title and subtitle is one of the main areas where you can start to get things right. And as I say, give your books a better chance of ranking and a better chance of getting noticed by customers getting clicked on and making those sales. Now, if you are wondering about the keywords, as I've mentioned earlier, and where, to, and where I find them and how I choose them, then watch this video next on how I do my own keyword research. Thank you very much for your time. It's very much appreciated. Don't forget to hit that subscribe button. And until next time, goodbye.